Now, we talked to uh, Gary Goodridge, and I've heard some interviews with Phil Baroni that have fought in Pride, and they were saying there was sometimes pressure on uh, North Americans to get paid more if they would lose to a, a Japanese fighter. Did you ever notice anything like that in those days? Um, I think, you know, early on in Pride and so forth as it was developing, I think, um, you know, there, there may have been some instances where guys were kind of pressured or, you know, I've heard grumblings of guys making, being, off, being made offers and so forth. Yeah, you know, but that was always just a select few guys. I think there was another group of guys who the Japanese, you know, didn't want to, no one wanted to interfere with that. You know, it was lose or win. These guys, you know, the, the samurais are, you know, there was, there, was, there was like a bunch of us who were like the samurai warriors that were just left alone to do our thing. And, uh, you know, there was no, with no idea of inter any interference because win or lose to that person you know it's, it's, it was, it, it is, its value is that it was an honorable match right and um, you know anyone that did that I think you know when you look back at it, look back at some of the fights you can tell which ones were and you can tell which ones weren't you know and uh, that's where Again, the sport of mixed martial arts was in a stage of evolution, you know, to the point where, yes, fights are now are more heavily, they're much more heavily influenced now by the promoters than they ever were back then. You know, just by the very nature of the sports structure, the promoters have a say in every aspect of that fighter's career, right down to you know, when you train, who you fight against, where you're gonna fight, and so forth. These things have a tremendous uh, effect on the outcome of a fight, right? So the interference by promoters, to me, is much greater now. And it's not, it has nothing to do with to me, but when a guy can call someone up and give them a stipend for six months to train and then call their opponent and say, hey, in two weeks, I want you to fight this guy, take or leave it, well, you're greatly influencing the fight. <laughs> Yeah. Right? When, when you approach it from that perspective, you're, without a doubt, greatly influenced in the fight. And in Japan, you know, competing in pride and so forth, that didn't happen often. You know, fighting in Japan, uh, the idea that, you know, some guys were paid to throw fights and so forth, I think that happened in a certain category of fights where, you know, you had a professional wrestler against a, a seasoned MMA fighter and the professional wrestler wins. Well. You know, if you can't figure out you're watching wrestling, well, <laughs> uh, you know, the joke's on you, what can I say? But uh, when it came to the actual fighter fighters, you know, the guys who had real fight records and so forth, that type of thing, it didn't happen.